What is going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday, Bobby Five. My man, Eric Sheets Aber. We are going to be talking through tonight's massive baseball slate. Uh, yeah. Coming, it's it's the trade deadline day, so hopefully we'll know everything before the games. I think we will because it'll be over soon. But there's been a lot of moves being made. Soto just got traded to uh, San Diego. Uh, in terms of last night, I had a, a good night on DraftKings, a very poor night on FanDuel. Uh, Sheets, how did you do? And uh, what do you think of this slate? Um, I, I lost on, I would play DraftKings and I lost, um, it's the way it goes. Got a couple of, a couple of good things. My Cleveland, uh, my Cleveland play worked out, except it's so weird. Whenever I hit Cleveland, I just never get Jose Ramirez to do anything. Isn't that um, weird when they go off? I feel like he doesn't do anything, but every gotta, other night I rely on, on Andre Jimenez to have three stolen bases and go four for four from, from, from the play. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, ready for today. And I hope we guys are on the right teams. Uh, uh Trey Mancini got traded that's the big news right no no it's kidding <laughs> <laughs> but Trey Mancini uh you know uh, your man forever my man the other day with the with the well play zero got shipped out to Houston um and um and Soto is is on what where San Diego now along with uh Josh Hader and Josh Bell yeah they loaded up they're really trying to compete with the Dodgers Yeah. um all right, well let's let's pull up your screen and jump into game by game. Yeah, it's look at this. Huge. We have we have the we have the return of um of 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 Jacob Degrom. I know who knew. I I actually forget that he plays baseball, as everybody yeah. calls says the best pitcher in baseball. But I say you have to pitch to actually be the best pitcher. Yeah, so we'll it's see true, if right? He, if he actually does end up pitching, you know, more than a game or two. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to uh to have him back. I don't I don't know what we're gonna do tonight. We'll get into that when it comes up because that isn't. It's an interesting situation. I don't know exactly what they're going to let him throw. Like, what did they yeah. let him throw? Thirty pitches? No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, let's. Do you want to start off with Seattle and New York? Yeah, good. Uh, good baseball game. Uh, aside from the fact that Judge is going to get a home run because he always does. Um, don't know quite else what to say about this. I'm not really quite getting to the Yankees as a stack today, uh, and I'm actually not really getting to either of the pitchers. Um, it's just. Game is just kind of a cross off for me. Do you like the Yankees here as a pivot? You like uh I don't even know who I'm pivoting off of, but you, you <laughs> like the Yankees here? You like either of these pitchers? This game seems kind of uh kind of blah to me. It is terrific hitting weather for what it's worth. Oh, it's um, hot here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's and you got 86 degrees with winds 10 mile an hour route to right center. It seems like a pretty good spot. But uh personally, I I don't love this game. I both pitchers are just good enough for me not to attack on a giant slate. If you wanted to play judge on one side. And I, I think guys like Winker and Suarez are cheap enough. I mean, the one thing about Seattle is they are really cheap. Uh, getting some exposure there might not be a bad idea. Cause I mean, you know, Santana 2,500 uh, Frazier's 2,800 should be leading off Winker 3,200. I don't love the stack, but I don't know. I'm sort of open to, to maybe, maybe relooking at that a little later. Um, but no, it's hard for me to play the Yankees against Gilbert. Uh, I don't think it's wrong, uh, but like you said, I, I'm probably going to have some one-offs of Judge because he hits a home run every day, at least a home run every day. Yep. Um, all right, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee. What do you got for me here, Sheets? Yeah, so um, it's a couple of pretty good pitching options today, and uh, and uh, Corbin Burns is certainly one of them. Uh, you know, he's going to strike a lot of people out. He's going to get a lot of people out. Pirates are not the greatest. And uh, he's probably a thousand too cheap at ten one. Um, so uh, not that other guys aren't similarly cheap today, as we'll get to. But uh, him, uh, he he at ten one is just underpriced. Um, so he's kind of a top option for me. And as far as the hitting goes, i Milwaukee is is on is on the list. It's not one of my favorites, but if you had me list, you know, six, seven, eight stacks to score some points. I would say uh, Milwaukee's in there. Um, so for me, Milwaukee's kind of a secondary hitting option and Burns is, is a top pitching option. Yeah. Um, I agree. I, I do think Milwaukee is interesting today and I love Burns. Um, I, I think that, you know, it, look, it's not a great hitters park compared to some of the other parts of parks we have out there, but I do think Milwaukee does make a lot of sense. And they, they the problem is they're very expensive, which is also the good thing because you're going to get zero ownership on them for the most part, without, with outside of probably Yelich and, and maybe Telez. But, boy, how about a year Rowdy Telez has had? Um, yeah. I sort of feel like he's quietly, like, I mean, he's got, like, he's got a, he's got, what has he got now? I'm running wide. He's got a bunch of them. Um, 
anyway, I, I do like uh, I do like Milwaukee for what it's worth. I'll see where they fit by the end of this show. But uh, Burns in Milwaukee, I think Burns is pretty clearly one of the best pitching options, maybe the best pitching option on the slate. So, yep. All right, let's move over, and we will talk about these Mets and uh, and these and these Nationals, whoever they are, whoever whoever's left of the Nationals. You have the worst. You have the guy who's been the best pitcher in baseball when he's been around, who probably is on some sort of severe pitch count. Although I I, I, I would sure hope so. <laughs> I mean, if he's not, I don't I don't really know what they're like. They have to get him back, right? Get him ready for the playoffs and everything like that. Um, I wonder how many starts they give him till he actually gets to like eighty pitches. Um, he he did he did start four games in the minors, but in those four games, he averaged I think three innings per start. Um, I don't think you can really like. I think he's actually going to get ownership too. So I'm going to find out a little bit more about the pitch count. It is literally like the nut matchup because I don't know who the Nationals expect to even be out there today. Yeah. Um, you've got, you know, Yadiel Hernandez and Victor Robles and Luis Garcia. Like it just, these are, this is the, that's like the heart of their lineup. I was going to say those are the good guys. Yeah. Those are the best ones. So I, I, I am not getting to, uh, to, I, as of right now, I'm not going to play DeGrom, but I'm going to have to to take a look to see what they say later in terms of pitches, because if they say 75 to 80, now 10, three is probably the wrong price for it, but. I just think he, it wouldn't be that hard for him to to get through f- five or six innings and possibly have like nine strikeouts against these guys. But I, I just, I don't know. It's going to be hard for me to pull that trigger. I like the Mets quite a bit today. And again, they're projecting to be low owned. And I think that, uh, I think you could do something, you know, I, I mean, both both Alonzo and Vogelbach uh, with, you know, the uh, Marte is really expensive. So nobody's going to play it. They're just expensive on DK. I think they'll be owned on FanDuel, but I don't think they'll be owned on, on DraftKings. And I think they're really good stacks. That's what I got for this one. Yeah, the um, I guess we'll start with the, uh, the with the hitting. I identified my three favorite stacks of the day, and I think the Mets are my number one um, mm. right now, at least. Um, and. Listen, there, there, there are some cheap pitchers out there. There are some uh, underpriced pitchers out there that I can that I can play to get these Mets in and not worry too much about the price. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'd love to play both Alonzo and Bolenback, but I can't do that on DraftKings. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I, I would play both of them. You know what I mean? Like I would, I play, I play multiple lineups. I would get one with Vogelbach and one with um, one with uh, with Alonzo, and just the the, the, the normal guys. Um, with respect to uh, the pitching, yeah, I mean, he pitched 67 pitches, and I think in his last minor league start or something. So I would imagine that they could give, they, they might give him 75 pitches. But I'm just, I'm not spotting 25 pitches to Corbin Burns. You know what I mean? I, I'm, right. I'm just not doing. If that. not, if not more, by the way. Right. Whatever. Okay, 120. Right. I mean, like, right. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm just not interested. Listen, literally, Degrom can pitch like a perfect game and score. 24 fantasy points, you know, what I mean? like, right, right. Uh, you know, a perfect four, four and a half innings or wherever he pitches. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm not going to play that, but I'm definitely into the Mets. Um, and let me see what now. I never really do this, but let me just see what my favorite Mets would be. Um, aside from this, I mentioned, yeah, Alonzo, uh, Vogelbach. I like Tyler Naquin. Um, and mm-hmm. then Nemo Lindor would be my, my top ones. And then Kanha also. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that, uh, I think all the, I think the whole, the whole stack makes sense. I like everybody uh, one through seven and then I don't mind using Nito if you need a cheap catcher, but uh, I, th- I do think they're a really good stack again today. All right. Uh, Toronto and Tampa Bay in the lowest total I've seen Toronto with in a long time. Uh, and, and you, you know, on the other side, you have an incredibly low total for a Tampa Bay team. That's not quite a, not, not the most impressive looking thing out there. I, I'm 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 thinking about what to do with Gaussman. I think I've got him as sort of a tier below Burns, but still kind of interesting. And I don't think I'm going to be playing the offenses here uh, at all. Yeah, I got no problem playing Gaussman. I mean, I'll do it. Um, he'll be less owned than Burns because he's probably going to score less fantasy points, right? But 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 he might not, and he might score more fantasy. That's I hate to really reduce. Uh, yeah. <laughs> DFS to what it is, but that's really kind of what it is. That uh, he, he might score more, most likely not, but he's going to be owned. You know, probably. You know, I, I would. I, Gausman is owned twenty, and Burns is owned thirty or something. That's mm-hmm. possible. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Gausman's totally in play. 
I did not quite get to the hitting either side here. So for me, it's either Gausman or nothing. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason, you know, the thing is with, with Rasmussen in a good bullpen and he usually does his four or five inning thing, gives up a couple runs. It, it just doesn't feel like a good stack spot, but if you want to take any individual bats, I'm certainly not going to fault you for anything on Toronto side, especially. All right. Is, is, uh, this, is this, is this where we say screw the price and screw the competition? We're just going to take, Tristan McKenzie at 5% and just like hope he, hope he, hope he smashes. I think that he's, I don't think he's going to be necessarily 5%. I I don't see him as being a much different option than, than Gaussman today. He's actually, oh, okay. been than, he's been better than Gaussman for what it's worth lately. I, it's still, there's still a sticker shock with the price, but I, yeah. I think that it's, it's not really sticker shock. Like he's the strikeout stuff is really good. He's going to have his ups and downs. He's going to have games where he gives up four or five runs. And he's still gonna put up a decent number on on those games usually. So, I, I do like him. Um, I, I I don't know where he's gonna end up for me. I, I have him and Gaussman is really close, and and I actually think as of right now I might be giving him a slight edge over Gaussman, but I think it's pretty close. So I do like McKenzie, and that's pretty much all I have from this game. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna end up with McKenzie. Um, I'll probably I'll probably end up doing something different. But I just figured I'd bring it up because you actually. You have a better better read on McKinsey than most people. I mean, you'll play you'll play him when no one else will. So I figured I'd bring it up. Yeah, we got those like, the couple games early in the year where he, well, the game he put up forty five. I think that he was like half a percent owned or something. It was like crazy. Right. Um, all right. Well, here you have. For some reason, they will not raise the 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 price of Strider and and you know maybe I don't really understand why actually to be honest with you. So. Strider is pretty clearly, I think, the the natural guy you're you're starting your your builds with. Probably St- Strider and Burns. Um, Strider could be 10-3, and I think I would be playing him here as well. Now he does have a little bit. He doesn't have the pitch thing that everybody else does. It's not a fun matchup against Philly, who's patient. But the strikeout stuff is just too elite. It's really hard not to have him number one or two on this slate. I think that it's pretty clear. And uh, and you throw you throw Nick Nelson out there against the Braves. And what is likely going to be a, a, a bullpen ish game, which is not my favorite thing. So it's not really going to be Nelson. I don't know who's going to be the long. Yeah, they have Appel as the as the long reliever. Okay, so they'll use it. Okay, it's 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 a it's a good spot for the Braves either way. Um, I, I do like them. I just feel a little bit. I always am concerned about ownership. I don't think I have to worry too much on the size of this slate, and they're expensive for the most part. But there is like Darno is down to four thirty seven hundred. Azuna's thirty six hundred. You've got a few guys you could use to make it doable. So I do have Atlanta as one of my one of my stacks as of right now. And obviously Strider is the natural. Uh, I, I just think he's an awesome play at 8,300. Uh, anytime he's against anybody, except for maybe the Dodgers, I would play him at 8,300. Yeah, Strider has competition for value on this slate, as far as I'm concerned. But Ooh. but uh, but he's um he definitely rates for now as like the top guy for me. Mm-hmm. But it's not it's not by an overwhelming amount. I, I do have him at 30% ownership to start off with. Um, but that's what you're going to get when you get 45% strikeout rate or whatever the hell he has. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, so um, uh, Philly, Philly, Philly's tough though, you know, uh, and I'm not just saying that because they won me all the money. The other day. <laughs> no, yeah. They're, they're yeah. pesky, man. Um, <laughs> the only guy that, that can't hit anymore is Didi Gregorius. I think, I don't think he's, he's had a hit in like the whole season. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I like, so I like Strider and I like, um, and I like Atlanta. Like you said, uh, they're, probably just below the Mets and one other team that I have is my top just raw points stuff. So yeah, I agree. Uh, Strider and Atlanta. Yep. Um, all right. Let's talk about the next one, uh, Minnesota and Detroit. It, it, it feels again, like we're like, like, I don't know. This feels like a, another spot where I really want to play Minnesota and I'm open to taking the Detroit value. Um that that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I I I like Minnesota. I think it's a good matchup for them. Uh, whether they, they throw Manning and the rest of their bullpen out, and who knows who Detroit's even going to have left by the end of the today. Um, I, I'm I'm on board with the the Minnesota stack, which you can do. Like you've got guys like Gordon or Kirilov if you want to play a full stack, and even Miranda's reasonably enough priced. And then you've got you know then you could spend up for the Buxton, Polanco, Correa. I I do think Minnesota might even be a little bit of a better stack than some of these other ones we've looked at today. So I, I I'm on board with Minnesota today personally. Um, and they're going to be one of my higher own teams probably. Yeah. Minnesota is my, is, is, is the, is my second highest uh, right below the Mets. Um, and uh, uh, as far as stacks go, they also are a pretty good value as well. 
So mm -hmm. what you what that what that means is that look, first of all, you have to figure out who the hell is playing here. What the hell? Yeah. Well, look at this board here. I mean, like mm -hmm. Buxton day to day, Kepler EIL, Garlic day to day, Kurloff day to day. I, who the large injury? I have no idea who's playing. So definitely yeah. have to look at that. That sure the Polanco lineup will matter. Play. Yeah, I'm sure Polanco will be a good play regardless. Yeah. Um, and uh, hey, what what's what's happening with Sanchez this year? Which 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 was was what? Just looking at Gary Sanchez. You want to see? Oh, Gary. He... Oh, I mean, he's just you know who he is now. Like he's yeah. got power, and he doesn't hit that much. <laughs> like, um, he's just not the. Hey, can can I ask you something? Yeah. Is it um is it the worst play in the in the United States to play Chris Archer? So I've seen a couple people like when I was doing some research this morning talk about Chris Archer, and I can't figure it out. The guys had five, gone five innings and in exactly two out of his. Uh, like 20 starts he I, it's, it, yes it's the perfect matchup um for him the, what does that mean and 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 we have other value on this slate and a guy we're going to talk about who's like a yeah. you know yeah. coming into the year was one of the top Cy Young candidates yeah. and I would I, I don't know that I can pull the trigger with a guy who doesn't ever pitch five innings but if there was a time to do it this is this would be the time I just it feels like a, a lot of speculation for a, a full slate to me for a 13 game. I, I, I agree with that. I just figured I would just bring it up. Yeah, if it was a smaller one and you wanted to get creative and everything was chalky, like I think that would make sense, but I, I just can't quite do it here. St. Um, Louis, Chicago, next game I have is a complete throwout. Um, any chance that uh, I'm missing something? I think Wainwright is being way too overlooked here. Okay. Uh, he's a th – th th there's a value. I don't know why we don't think – Wainwright just put up 30 against Toronto – in Toronto, True. Um, they're, they're still upside for him. The Whites, the Cubs are, we know that they have a lot of strikeouts in their lineup, uh, low run total. Uh, everything about this feels like it could be a good spot for him. And I don't think that anybody's, as of right now, I haven't seen anybody looking like they're going to play him. Right. Uh, it is great hitting weather for what it's worth in St. Louis. And what does that mean? I don't, I don't know that it means all that much to, to, to Wainwright. Wainwright has probably one of the longest leash of any of these cheap guys that we can talk about. Although we do have another one we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but I, but I'm into Wainwright tonight for sure. Um, I, I don't know how much I'm going to actually use him because there's a couple, like we said, there's a couple other guys who are cheap that are pretty interesting strider. And then we'll get to Giolito in a bit, but, uh, but on the other side, like, it, it, are we maybe overlooking it, it, it are, is St. Louis maybe being overlooked a little bit? You got, you know, again, I said, good hitting with 92 degrees Keegan Thompson. I actually believe in the talent, but I think he's just all over the place in terms of what to, what to know to what to expect. He can get really, really wild. And it just seems like the kind of team that, you know, could go off against the, against the guy that gets really wild. So I have St. Louis as a, as an interesting secondary stack at the moment, but I might consider them even for a full stack later on. Cause once you get past Thompson, that bullpen is awful. And if he does get wild early, you could really see this game open up and I could see a huge score. Plus you have cheap options like Gorman and Newt Bar, who you could use to fill out a stack to Young is back at, at 3K, who I believe was also on your winning lineup the other day. She loves. Uh, Corey Dickerson is too. The bottom of their lineup is literally the cheapest thing you've ever seen in the top of their lineup is costs a million dollars. Like right. it's pretty wild. It's like, like Goldschmidt is worth like four players. Like, right, right, exactly. Goldschmidt <laughs> equals four, Noronado equals three. Right. Um I, I kind of like St. Louis today. And um, so I'll see where they end up for me, but they're definitely on my, on my list. And I, again, as I mentioned, I like Wayne, Wright. And if you're going to play, if you're going to do that, I like to try and play those guys in the same lineups because he'll have the freedom to just pitch freely. Um, assuming they do get out to a big lead or something like that. All right. Let's talk about uh, Baltimore, Texas. You know, it's a, it's a big slate and all that stuff, but I'm going to have to do at least one Texas stack. Uh, it's, it's just my. Blue. Are you seeing? I'm sharing my screen right now. There it is. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, there it is. Um, you have the, you know, the who knows what we're gonna get from uh from Jordan Lyles, and when he when he starts missing, he tends to leave things over the plate and gets hit really really hard. Uh, I like Texas a little bit. I hate the park, uh, but I I do think Texas is really interesting, and that I'm not probably going to play Spencer Howard. I don't think you need to for this slate, but he, you know, it came in nicely for for us last time against the the the, the team formerly known as the Los Angeles Angels. Um, but I I just think that uh, I think it's pretty much going to be just Texas for me in this game. And I, I again, they're they're further down than some of these other teams, but I will make sure to play them a little bit. Yeah, I got them as a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid. Uh, I don't say low on, you know, whatever, whatever Jordan Lyles is pitching, everybody plays the other team. They just they uh, used to, not anymore. Really. 
I feel like it's gone away. So I'll, I'm going to try. I'll, I'll definitely have Texas as, as one of those teams. Um, i would probably force into one bigger lineup. I think um, uh, those are the three. My three are the Mets, Texas, and Minnesota. Those are my three favorites. Um, and uh, with the Texas, like you said, I mean, you could not that they're that cheap. I mean, you know, listen. I mean, I, I feel like playing. You know, the three guys I have are, are all around all around five k, like Simeon, Seager, and and Garcia. Tavares is cheap. Low is cheap. You know. Um, Calhoun is cheap. Calhoun, I forgot about Calhoun. It's two K. Yeah. Oh God. Two K flat. Yeah, um, I, I think it's interesting. I, I I I like this. I like that idea. I'm glad it's in your top three because I I do like them and I was sort of flirting with what to do with them and um, as of right now I think I'm pretty interested. So I like that. All right, uh, Boston and Houston. Um, this is another one of the mid tier. Good options in Christian Javier. Yep. Um, with Boston, I th- I feel like maybe ha- like I love Javier's strikeout stuff, and I feel like we're we're all talking about how bad Boston is and all this stuff. The lineup they're going to run out there isn't all that bad. I mean, the top four, I should say, are really or top five actually, really aren't that bad. Um, as of right now, I mean, again, we'll see what happens after the trade deadline if anybody else gets moved around for them, which. They, they do no longer have Vasquez. Obviously, they traded him across the dugout, which is kind of interesting. Is uh, So we're going to have Vasquez in the lineup for Houston. He just had to swap dugouts the other day. I guess they made it easy for him to switch teams. But, uh, yeah, um, we I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm still not – Houston can can get to people and all that stuff. Cutter Crawford has been just good enough and not really gotten blown up to where I don't really want to play Houston, and it's a huge slate, so I want to narrow down. I have Javier as – just uh, in between the other guys. I have him less than Strider, but I do think that he is certainly in play. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I have on him. I don't, I don't know that, I don't know if I want to prioritize him over Strider. That's pretty much my only real take on him. Yeah. I have Javier below Strider as well, but I have him over maybe Gaussman. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I have Houston as, you know, just always a team that's, that's, that's a pivot along with the Yankees, Milwaukee, Atlanta, like all these, not Pitt or whatever, but all these, all these guys are big. They'll have upside, and they might not be that 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 cheap though. Um, but I think Houston's in play pretty, you know, most most days. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean they're fine. If I get to them, I'll get to them. I won't, I won't force them in. But I think Javier is obviously, you know, one of the one of the better plays on the slate. Man, this Houston lineup now looks a lot stronger. <laughs> Um, you, you, you take out Maldonado or Castro, whoever they, you were using a catcher and you have Vasquez instead, who's a pretty solid hitter. And then you, you throw in Mancini to fill in your extra position. It, it's a pretty tough one through nine for this Houston team, man. I, I don't think I'm going to be taking pictures from against Houston for a little while. <laughs> like yeah. that is a, that's a pretty good lineup. Bregman Bregman's out. That, that, that helps. Even with Bregman out, I don't even know how much he is. He is, hasn't been all that great this year. I mean, yeah, yeah, if you had Bregman in there and you could in, instead of uh, Jake Meyer, I mean, Alendis Diaz has been almost as good as Bregman has been uh, this year. So I, I, uh, I don't know. I think this is kind of a, I, I just like the lineup. I don't know if I want to stack them today, but I, I do think they're a good lineup and uh, much better than they were a couple of days ago. Okay, so I I think that this that this 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 next uh, this next uh, pitcher here, I think this uh, this this price tag's a joke, and I think the ownership is a joke. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm looking at my early ownership projections like 11. percent I mean that's got to be a, like a like almost a typo. I mean like I'm looking everywhere, and it seems to be the same thing though. I know, yeah. I know. And now now here here's 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 the deal. I mean like first of all, have you? When's the last time you saw a guy that that had he was ninety seven hundred earlier this year. Like <laughs> now he's sixty eight hundred. You know what I mean, like he was like eleven k many times last year. last year. Yeah, yeah. he's like eleven k. And um, I mean, look, he's he's has listen. This type of of distribution from him is not is nothing new. You know what I mean? And like, it's ideal for tournaments. Like that's what I'm bad. saying. But yeah. like all of a sudden he's like terrible. I mean, this is this is what he's. You know what I mean? Like this is what you always sign on for. When you play him, but this year he's had more duds than last year. I, mm-hmm. I guess that's all. So um, we're going to really kill him for 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 you know for for a performance in Colorado. I mean, you know what I mean? Like anyway, right? And back to back against Cleveland, which is no picnic because they don't strike out. You know? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's hard to dispute the fact that he hasn't hasn't been as good as he was last year. But 
But sixty eight hundred against Kansas City, I mean, like I I, I don't know. I'm just gonna <laughs> listen. There there's a there's a, a phrase in my industry which which is uh, I'm probably gonna violate here. And the, the idea is, is is when it comes to stocks, you don't want to catch a falling knife. What that means is that. You like a stock and all of a sudden you see it keep going down and down and down and down. It's usually a dangerous to just try to say, well, this is just way too, I have to buy it here. Because they usually go down even further than when you than when you think. And I'm probably going to violate it, but that's kind of what I feel like I'm doing here with Giolito. Like he's, he wasn't worth 9K, wasn't worth 8K, wasn't worth 7K. I mean, last try. But at 6,800, now I'm going to like what you used to call it, like pr- almost price enforced. Yeah. Right? yeah. Kind of have to do it, you know? Yep. So so I'm, pr- I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to do it. And then, you know, Merrifield and, and, and Salvador Perez will get home runs in the first. No, excuse me. Perez will get a stolen base. And then, and then, 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 then Perez will knock him home. It'll be four nothing after for the first. And then I'll be happy if they, they leave him in long enough to get seven strikeouts to give me 14 fantasy points. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Um, but if that's the floor or whatever, um, sounds good to me. I mean, I'll, I'll try it. So. And, and then it's it's certainly impossible to dispute how good a play Kansas City is, right? I mean, like Kansas City is a, almost like an elite play on a slate like this, I think, because I th- I, I think Juve is going to get owned, and for the exact same reason, he's a good GPP play. I think Kansas City is a good a good stack to stack against. Yeah, I I, I hear you. Um, for what it's worth, there is some there is like a little bit of history with uh, Giolito and this team because you're the same division and all that for since he started pitching. Now, not all the hitters are exactly the same, but you know, he's got uh, basically uh, almost about a 30% strikeout rate, which is pretty awesome. They've also hit him pretty hard at times. So that sort of speaks to exactly what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, do we, do we, do we, you know, both sides, both sides certainly make sense. And whereas it's funny because I have no interest in the White Sox side and they've got a full run higher, more than right. Run higher right. total. But um, uh, yeah, I, I I definitely get the argument for playing the other side. I actually think it's really sharp sheets. Um, I, may, maybe not even as a full – any of the bats, because you, you can run on Giolito a little bit. He gives up power. Uh, it's enough to where, like, maybe you play, like, a Hunter Dozier, Salvador Perez, and Whit Merrifield or something, or Bobby Witt if he's in the lineup today. You could even throw in a Michael Taylor as a, a cheap. He's got a good history against him. Uh, if you if you don't want to play or the Pascantino at no no cost, so I think that I think that that is a sharp call. I don't think it's going to happen for me probably today with KC on a, the huge slate, but I definitely like, think that's an interesting way of, of viewing it. And on a small slate, we would be I'd be all over that. On a big slate, I, I just like enough enough other stacks a little bit better. But but yeah, I think that's an interesting call uh, for sure. All right, uh, other cheap options here. Well, now you know after all these other things. Um, Shoot, I don't know what the hell to do. Speaking here. speaking of which, the catch a falling knife is is now the time we can play Syndergaard again. I mean, he's been he's been over seventeen three out of his last four at seven K. That's not all that bad. He's got the A's, the best matchup basically in baseball. Well, you, you could argue them versus Detroit. Um, you know, he's had a couple of decent games lately in 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 harder matchups, and seven K is is certainly reasonable. If Giolito wasn't sitting there at sixty eight hundred, I think I would be even more onto this. I think that I'm into the Syndergaard idea. Um, and I think that's going to keep this is this is probably why I'm going to not end up playing the guy who I like, which is Wainwright. And that's probably when we do our show tomorrow and I go, oh, my God, what was I think? How did I not play Wainwright? And he put up thirty five and I played in Syndergaard. He put up twelve. I don't know. That's I, I can feel that already coming. <laughs> um, right. But I, I, I do like Syndergaard for what it's worth. I don't have any interest in stacking the Angels these days, but I don't mind if you wanted to take a Taylor Ward. Max Stassi, those two guys, those two guys particularly, and maybe you make it a three man with Otani. I think it's completely viable against Irvin. Um, but that's pretty much all I got for this one. Yeah. Um, I have um Oakland as rating to be cheap. Um, but I, I just I don't want to attack Syndergaard either. So I'm probably gonna pass on that. I think I'm more inclined to play Syndergaard than um than anything else in this game. He's just a little bit behind these other guys for me. Like he's behind Giolito. I'm just talking about prices. Mm-hmm. I, I do have him for whatever, for, for whatever this is worth. I do have him a little bit better than, um, than Wainwright um, mm-hmm. for whatever that's worth. I probably just probably doesn't have the ceiling that Wainwright has because Wainwright does at least strike some people out now and every once in a while. Um, but I do, I do think Syndergaard is in play. Um mm-hmm. So, uh, but I still I see him at ten percent below 
Uh, that's that's pretty interesting. Like if you get you know if you do similar builds to Giolito to Giolito builds, right? And but mm -hmm. but but put Syndergaard in instead. Um, I think that I think that that's pretty uh, pretty wise. Yeah, I I mean I'm not sure where the ownership ends up with both of them. I think they both end up a little little like higher than they're currently being projected, but probably a little bit lower than than uh, than maybe we think they should be. So yeah. I do have Syndergaard as a guy who I'm definitely going to get after. Well, you know, because the thing is, Bobby, is that you could play like Strider and Birds together and not have to worry about. It. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. have to worry about Giolito volatility in a way. You know what I mean? Um, or you could, but then you could go full team volatility and play play Syndergaard and, and Giolito together, and then right. you get all the bats you want. Right. Or uh, right. Spencer, Spencer Howard or whatever. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. But no, but Giolito, you don't even need to go that low. Giolito, right. Syndergaard, 68 and 7. That, that's you know? all you need. They're, they're, listen, it's, nobody's even in cores. I mean, like, you, nobody's yeah. that expensive this today. <laughs> right. It's only, that, that, that's if you want to play guys like Jordan Alvarez and Aaron right. Judge and stuff like that. Um, all right, Dodgers and Giants, which again, good baseball teams, good game. The Dodgers, this is the thing with the Dodgers, though, as I said yesterday. Like, yep. They they put up, they have big games against guys who they shouldn't and who got and getting against it's just you know, it's really hard to peg them. I think in general on slates like yesterday, one thing I may have made a mistake on, not that I should have been stacking the Dodgers. I'd seen Logan Webb just dominate them a number of times already. So I, I was like a little, I was just like, no, no way, I'm gonna do it in San Francisco. I do think that if you're like one of those people who just always plays 150, that just just carve out a little five percent for of the Dodgers as part of that. I would say that there's like there's like three teams in baseball you do that with every game basically, regardless of matchup, and it'd be the Dodgers, uh, Blue Jays, and Yankees. And if you did that and then just use the rest of the 85 for you for your main builds, I think you're probably I think it's probably a smart thing to do just because you don't you really don't know when they're going to go off. Look at you know our, our guy Rody. I think he won two two hundred K twice last year, and the Dodgers were like in in the worst matchups they'd been in all year. And on those games, they went up for for like eleven runs. It feels like that could happen today against their former pitcher and Alex Wood, but I'm I, I can't bring myself to actually pull the trigger. Um, I'm not playing enough 150 lineups, so I, I don't think I'm going to stack the Dodgers today. But I certainly uh, am not going to fault you for doing so, and I'm not playing any pitching in this game. How about you? Yeah, I'm not playing Alex Wood. Uh, if I was going to play Alex Wood, I would I would. I would play Adam Wainwright um, among others. Um, yeah. So I don't need that. And uh, you no, know, today is not a Tyler Anderson day. Um, he's been really good, by the way, for what it's worth. Yeah, he's been fine. But, you know, at 8,900, I'll save the 200 and play Javier. You know what I mean? Or I'll yeah. Yeah. save the 600 and play Strider or something like that. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm kind of off this game as well. Yep. Uh, makes perfect sense to me. Um, and now the new super team, San Diego, right? San Diego. And this is this. We might have to just see who's going to be in the lineup for them today. Right. I don't know if they're going to be able to get those guys in today. My guess is they probably won't be. Um, boy, I'll tell you, though. That, uh, so you've got I've got mixed things on starters for Colorado here. I've got Urena. Yeah. And then I see Feltner in there. I don't know what the hell is going on with that. I think, yeah, Urena is probably. Maybe after he got hit so hard last time, maybe they don't end up starting him. I don't know why. Why I've got different pitchers, but uh, San Diego, you know, if they if they if these same guys play at their prices, they 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 definitely rate out as like a a good cheap secondary stack at the very least with guys like Voit, uh, Will Myers is super cheap, um, Mazzara super cheap. Uh, those are probably my favorite ones. Long then you could throw in Machado if you wanted to get a stack. I don't mind. I don't mind the idea of. I, I will attack Arena in general. I don't like attacking Colorado pitchers outside of Colorado because again they pitch in Colorado. So everything for them is the biggest upgrade you could imagine. But at the same time, Arena is bad enough to where I I think you could actually make a good argument for San Diego here today. Um. So wait. So Soto's in San Diego now. Soto and Josh Bell. But he's not. But they're not there today. No, but if they are, I mean, that's a pretty crazy lineup who they've got out there. Right. Um, is Void a lefty? No, he's a righty. And they still have him in the Yankee uniform, right? Um, if, yeah, that's the, the problem. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, look, look, if Arena pitches, I mean, there's certainly risk that somebody scores 10 on him. I mean, that's yeah. certainly, certainly possible. And, and, uh, Maybe some of these San Diego guys might be their last time uh, to start lineup for a while after these guys come over, you know? So maybe mm -hmm. you play like, uh, I don't know, whoever the fringe guys are, like uh, Cronenworth. I don't know who, who who's going to lose their starting jobs because of this, but um, somebody is. Um, so maybe play those guys. Those guys will definitely get five at-bats, I guess. Um, 
That yeah, that, that's a that, that one's gonna bother me. I, I I might have to get a little some of that. Yeah, um, some of the San Diego. I mean, who's to say that San Diego is not as good of a play as Texas? For, for for example. Oh, um, absolutely. I hear. I, I agree with you. I actually think San Diego will be more popular too. Oh, yeah. you do? Yeah. I mean, I don't think they're gonna be popular enough, but I think I think people are gonna are gonna spot San Diego. Boy, I, I, I get it. Boy, Grisham, Machado, obviously. Uh, Cronenworth, Profar. You've Myers, got Myers and him. Mazzara cheap. You could you could do it a lot of different ways. Yeah, I might have to get some of that. And let me just double check what the weather looks like in San Diego because that does sometimes a uh, little bit of wind coming in from left. Not too bad. Uh, Seventy five degrees is pretty good for San Diego. So, yeah. And the Giants are all the way up to sixty degrees in San Francisco tonight. Wow. Wow. It's, actually, it's like it's 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 a heat wave. It's a heat wave. <laughs> this heat wave is no joke. Yeah, believe these people. How would they be able to survive? It's so hot. What is it? August second. <laughs> seriously um all right so so i mean just to reiterate i think that my favorite stack as of right now is minnesota but i think they're all pretty bunched up between minnesota atlanta new york mets milwaukee and texas so i'm gonna have to try and fiddle with some builds before i do it i will put up my builds on truedfs.com my early builds by the way the early builds have been kind of crushing it a little bit so okay. not the exact ones you know the, I, I always encourage people to make a couple pivots but i, I give you an idea of what you're thinking early in the day and, and they've been really, really solid. I mean, everything I had yesterday was Yankees, Mets, sort of double, go, you know what I mean? So, so so do take a look at the early builds today. And then for pitching, I've got my priorities. And I know it's kind of weird, but Burns and Strider are my one and two. And then G Giolito and Syndergaard are the two other, the cheap ones. And then mixing in some uh, Javier. Actually, I think Javier belongs in that category too. And Wainwright. Um but uh, just still trying to think about if I want to do anything with Gaussman, McKinsey, or DeGrom. I don't think I'm going to end up playing any of those guys realistically, to be honest. Be some combination uh, for me of, uh, Stry of, 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 the, of the, the little more logical guys, like, like Strider, Giolito, Javier Burns, and Gaussman. I, I, in the end, I don't think I'm going to play Syndergaard. In the end, I don't think I'm going to play Wainwright. Although, you, you know what? You're, you're, I don't know. You might, I don't want to say talk me into it because you didn't really – try to talk me into it but this Wainwright play at 7500 I mean this is um mm -hmm. this is legit I mean it's not like he's he's got an easy matchup the guy's been good this year I don't know what the problem is he's been up and down but yeah I hear you I mean it is interesting he's actually been pretty solid enough I mean he's even as just average points he's, you're right he actually has been good I should I shouldn't say that I think he has a similar a similar situation that I that I I don't think he and Syndergaard are, are so different but then again, if I don't think they're so different, why wouldn't I take the guy who's been more consistent? And right. one thing I want to point out about Syndergaard in real life pitching, he really tried to change his pitching style when he couldn't throw quite get the same gas. So he's he's not going to have the same strikeout upside that he used to. Yeah. Um, but he's he in real life, he hasn't been nearly as bad as he gets credit for. Like he's not get he's not going out there getting shelled all the time. He's had a couple really bad outings, and other than that, he's pretty usually pretty good for like five and two thirds, two runs, five strikeouts. Like solid stuff, but the matchup is good enough today to where I'm I'm willing to take a shot at with them at 7K. Yeah. The other two things I will add is if in fact Giolito starts to get a lot of steam, which I think he might, um, I I I would definitely throw the can throw Kansas City in as a kind of main piece. And I will also uh just just I don't know, I don't know, just just to satisfy my math OCD ness, I'll probably will play a Chris Archer lineup, um, just because he's almost exactly the same price as Giolito. Um yep. And see what happens. I know. It's, well, I know what's going to happen. I, I, it's it's going to be bad, but whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, 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 it's it, that that's that. I I still can't get to that one when I've got guys who actually. I just need the leash, man. You know what I mean? I, if I'm going to play right. these guys, and I, one guy has like no leash, and the other guys have infinite leash, but have been struggling sometimes, I'll take the guys who are, have the leash. You know. Um. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, I will be live at six Eastern. Sheets, are you going to be around? No, I'm not going to be around tonight. No sheets for live tonight, but I'll be there at live and. uh you know, we'll be there right at uh, six on the dot and fire in on in, any questions, any thoughts as quickly as possible. And we'll, we'll, we'll get it moving. I know it's not like basketball where there's a million back and forths, but uh, we do love it when it's uh, I love it when everybody's, you know, heavily involved and in, in going back and forth and whatnot. Um, anyway, good luck to everybody today. And uh, hopefully someone can take something down. Good luck. Bobby, Bobby. Bobby.